In 1987, Michael Morton was convicted of murdering his wife, a crime he did not commit. He spent nearly 25 years behind bars in Texas and says almost everything he had was taken. But 60 Minutes correspondent Lara Logan shows us how the most extraordinary part of his journey may be what he has accomplished since his release. Lara, good morning. Good morning, Anthony. You know, you don't often meet someone like Michael Morton. After a quarter century in prison, he walked free without bitterness or anger. Instead, he was determined to change the law so that no one else would suffer like he did. More than two years after we interviewed him for 60 Minutes, we wanted to see what Michael had made of his life and the freedom he fought so hard for. At the end of a small lake tucked away in East Texas, the air smells of pine. A warm breeze carries across the water, and Michael Morton relishes his new home. I get to watch the world wake up every day, and uh, I get to do that on my terms, not anybody else's. It could not be more different from the cell where Michael spent much of his time in prison. I've lost so much. It takes very little to make me happy. I'm married now, and my wife loves it that I think she's a great cook. She said, well, you know, after what he's been eating, I can serve him anything. <laughs> so what is happiness for you? Happiness is normalcy. It's just, you know, I'm not in that cage anymore. Michael Morton's nightmare began in 1986, when his wife Christine was bludgeoned to death in their home in Austin, Texas. Despite no direct evidence linking him to the crime, he quickly became the prime suspect. At his trial, Williamson County District Attorney Ken Anderson painted a picture of him as a violent, sexually depraved murderer who showed no remorse for his crime. It got sickening after a while to watch him cry at the wrong times, and he seemed only to cry for himself. The jury believed Anderson and sent Morton to prison for life. He'd lost his wife, his freedom, and now his son, Eric. This home video was taken just months before they were separated, a heartbreaking moment Morton described for us on 60 Minutes. They literally pulled my son out of my arms because he was screaming for me, and you know, the little hand is out, and he's being pulled away. And it's, it was one of the worst parts. Eric was three years old when his father was arrested and grew up believing he was a murderer. Over the years, he gradually erased him from his life and even changed his name. So the news that DNA evidence had proven Morton was innocent was at first hard for Eric to accept. I was a little scared because it just meant, you know, something was going to change. Everything was going to change. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and it has. We met Eric and his dad at the Houston home of his lawyer and close friend, John Rayley. It was here, on this bench in November 2011, that Eric and his father were reunited. They had not seen each other for 15 years. The cool things about us getting back together is nobody, nobody can tell him the things about his mother that I can. And that's been a real strong link between us. So in a way, she's brought you two together, even in death. Yeah. <laughs> Not long after Morton came out of prison, Eric and his wife Maggie had their first child, a baby girl. They called her Christine, after his mother. What was it like for you the first time you held your granddaughter? Oh, man. Um, I thought she was the golden child, you know. <laughs> uh, everything she did was perfect, but... Um, I also cannot not see uh, my late wife's eyes in there, too, because she had those same eyes. Christine is now two years old and has a little brother, Patrick. They live a few hours away from their grandparents, who try to see them as much as they can. Every day is good. There's not much we could do that I'd be disappointed in. You know, you can't stop smiling sitting next to him, can you? It's quite incredible because the last time we met, you were just getting to know him again. Barely, yeah. And in fact, it was a little overwhelming because I was getting to know everything. Michael Morton credits John Rayleigh and a team of lawyers from the Innocence Project led by Barry Sheck 
for his freedom. He and his attorneys say he would never have been convicted if his former prosecutor, Ken Anderson, had not withheld evidence during his trial. They worked hard to see him held accountable, and last year, Anderson was sentenced to prison for 10 days, resigned from the bench, and was banned from practicing law in Texas. It was regarded as an unprecedented outcome, but it was not Morton's only victory. He also lobbied successfully for a new law that requires entire files get handed over, not just evidence the prosecution deems favorable to the defense. It's called the Michael Morton Act. Well, before the Michael Morton Act, the prosecutors got to be the gatekeepers. They got to decide, well, I may or I may not want to turn this over. They and could, now? Now, they must turn over all offense reports, which are the investigation of the, of the police officers or the deputies. They have to turn those over, the complete file. It's a different world now. Morton has also been the subject of an award-winning documentary. There is a lot of evil residing within these walls. And written a book about his life, published by CBS subsidiary Simon & Schuster. He and his wife Cynthia are now living the life that he was denied for so long, at the end of that small lake in East Texas. Being in the water is like flying. And so water is kind of freedom. Are you at peace? Oh, yeah. I'm a blessed man. Meanwhile, the Innocence Project is conducting a review of all cases prosecuted by Ken Anderson in Williamson County. Boy, such a great story, Lara, for Michael Morton. And I'm so glad, fortunate he was, that people believed in him. How difficult has it been for the father and son to reconnect? I'm very fascinated by their relationship. That has really been a fragile and um, somewhat painful journey, especially yeah. for Eric. You know, Michael spent all those years in prison with one thought, which was to see his son again. And yet Eric spent his whole life trying to erase his father mm -hmm. from his life. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it shook his foundation. Everything he believed in was not true. And it's like you know, telling us we think the world is round. Yes. It's like somebody coming and saying to you that it's not. Yeah. You have to go back on all your thoughts, yeah. everything you've everything, assumed. Yeah. Everything. And so, you know, it, it, it felt, it could seem like it was a little cold, but he said at first he didn't even want it. You know, yeah. he, didn't, yeah. he didn't even want to have sure. anything to do with him. And how did Michael meet his new wife? At church. Uh -huh. And it's funny because um, they went out for coffee a few times and she said to me, you know, he was so dense, I had to ask him out. She even <laughs> called his mother. <laughs> and they, I have to say, they are very, very happy. Yeah, they look it. That's, That's good. It was a great story. Good to Thank see you, Laura. You.